welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and on this episode of Calling All Titans, I'll be talking about Sifu of the Kung Fu Fighters. This is a titan that not many expected, me among them. I've always felt that Kung Fu Fighters was solid and unspectacular, in a word, average. And I would think that average factions aren't getting titans, but below average ones who need to become average. However, they have some really nice cards that carry them, and they have a chance to be an extreme counter to counter counter factions, which are ever increasing, except in Marvel. As usual, we will start with our basic three questions. Where did Kung Fu go wrong? What do they need? And what does this Titan give them? Despite their average strength overall, I have always felt that Kung Fu fighters are top heavy. The Dragon Warrior is extremely strong, and many viewers called him overpowered when he first came out. From a baseline standpoint, I believe the invulnerability of the ability or the ability to affect rival minions would have to go because you can move a ton of counters from minion to minion. Of course, there's the question of how effective this becomes in practice. From a ceiling perspective, it's very strong, a pure power swing. But from your own perspective, it's just power movement. Think about moving counters in relation to actual movement. When you move the minion, its counters move along with it. You are adding a lot of power after naturally spreading out. For moving counters, it is inherently capped. It will never equal the value of moving the minion itself. While this is nice for engine minions who want to stay in play, Kung Fu doesn't really have those, not in the traditional sense. Internally, the value of Dragon Warrior is tied to how many counters you can put on a single minion, with the greatest value being able to pivot that power. And because the bottom half of Kung Fu is weak, they need to maximize every opportunity. Crickets mean more when stealing a counter from someone else, because otherwise, it's largely just a combo card to place a single counter. And those recruits aren't generally satisfying. The Drunken Master lives up to its name. At first, I thought this is a really cool idea until I realized it's all pretty meaningless. And I'll say, with modern modifications, there's a really interesting Drunken Master ability out there. But we don't have it. Drunken Master can generate one counter, but then you need the ability to remove them. And removing a single counter is a waste of Dragon Warrior's potential. You can move the counter with Ancient Chinese Art so that Drunken Master can gain another counter, or Ancient Chinese Art can just place the counter directly. And this really limited Kung Fu's potential because vertical transfers don't mean much since it doesn't change power. It builds a singularly powerful minion, but they aren't equipped to do so without expert timing. In fact, Kung Fu really doesn't have much of a burst to compensate for the power creep that comes with a singularly powerful minion. Their most power producing action is Everybody Knew Their Part, which is a below average summon, with their minions generally capping out at 4. But as I worked on videos for other titans, I started to wonder, is Kung Fu Fighters secretly a destruction faction, since all destruction factions are getting a titan apparently? And I realized that they have more destruction than I thought. They have 5 total cards, 2 of which are renewable. That's a higher percentage than I am comfortable with considering their playstyle. They lack the action based power to consistently be come at me, and they power creep too hard to be trying to kill minions in range. Also, for some reason, everybody was kung fu fighting exists. This card is just pure theme and only exists because it is a song name. But consider the context of Let's Get It On. For the destruction to matter, you are looking at something like a 6-5 split. Whereas dinosaurs have a high base power, or werewolves have marking territory, Kung Fu has to work for their power. And I think that, if I'm capable of destroying something good, I really should just break it. And I find that Kung Fu often has competing interests. Lady Whirlwind wants power from non-counters to be most effective, but their only such action is terminal and limited in output, and you want to save it for your best minions, creating a bit of a blossom paradox. So why would you attach that to Lady Whirlwind's destruction? It creates a combo problem. At best, maybe you end up normalizing the power at the cost of your action, but that means it has to be really close, since it is hard for Kung Fu to transfer counters, but perhaps now it is better. I will state up front that my official position on this Titan has long been this heavily qualified statement. I think that I think that I like this Titan. I won't lie, it has some head-scratching qualities. I played it wrong a few times because I keep getting surprised that it would have the abilities that it does, and thus I read my own ability instead, but we will start with the entry criteria. You need two or more power counters on your minions, then you can play the Titan and transfer at least two counters to it, potentially more. I really questioned why this ability existed, since they are all about moving counters among their minions, and yet those counters become stuck there. And no, I don't normally consider Sifu to be a good expert timing target. Yes, it lets you use Drunken Master again, but why make it explicitly required? It's uncapped, 
So it's not like they were afraid of a massive convergence, because that can still happen. But I have a theory, and it has to do with a new term I am trying to trademark, tight impotence. You've heard me talk about item potence before, an ability where, without a change of state, replaying the event will produce the same result, like a grandma hitting the same good card. Well, when you look at the titans of the first event kit, a lot of them are tight and potent. You can play them for free, and if the condition still holds true, you can play them again for free next turn. Famously, this creates an infinite loop with Merchicon, unless they formalize that secret rule that I'm supposed to not tell you about, but of the original titans, you have Dagon, the Great Talent Killer, Death on Six Legs, The Hill That Strolls, and technically Cream Puff Man. And it's no coincidence that three of those are considered overpowered. This isn't a good quality for Titans, as it essentially means coming into play at no cost, and removing the counters prevents that. There aren't many obvious Titan potent Titans in the new set, with Great Grandma being the lone exception that I think of immediately, but only if you forego her talent. If I convince myself that's the reason, I'm okay with it. If it's not the reason, then I feel differently, not that it matters. Once out, we have another Titan template, ongoing. After you do the thing we already do, do it slightly better. Talent, do the thing we do, or gain a power counter. However, in this case, transferring or moving power counters is incredibly rare. And if you were capable of doing it, you were already a Kung Fu partner and likely didn't need the boost. But this is meant to service Kung Fu themselves, as it makes a small difference to them. Consider the same ancient Chinese art combo as before. You can place just one counter, but now when you pull from Drunken Master, you generate an additional counter, and Drunken Master can still generate his own, so it becomes plus two instead of plus one. But more importantly is where the two counters are. They are on the same minion. Since Dragon Warrior can only target single minions, you want singularly powerful ones, and this helps with building it. It is slightly convoluted, and dare I say gimmicky at times, but it does work. With a Cricket, you are now generating a counter in addition to the move. If you lead with a Drunken Master, you can have four. Cricket is played for two, transfers the counter and gains one to become a four, and Drunken Master re-triggers, letting it become four again, and all this power is permanent, and most importantly, not necessarily local. This is not earth-shattering, but it does give you options and allows counters to start stacking, because when you transfer off the Cricket, you are moving a stack of three. However, this is where my mental image of Sifu and the actual ability really starts to differ. I do not, under any circumstance, believe that a Titan should have its leader's ability, but the talent here is really questionable in that it only is limited to one counter. When combined with the ongoing, you are basically just adding a power counter if another minion has a counter. The nice thing about Sifu's ongoing is that it creates a stack of counters, but Sifu himself cannot move the stack, only one of them. As far as multi-counter movement goes, the Kung Fu Fighters only have three cards that do it. Two ancient Chinese arts, which are vertical movement, building a singularly powerful minion without a way to really capitalize on it. Dragon Warrior is the other, and the only horizontal movement, but that just increases the reliance on a single card in a faction with no draw. There is, of course, expert timing, but I often use that for bigger and better things. Though I will give Kung Fu credit for not solving their problems with card draw, which is seemingly given out for free these days. I feel like the talent should have been two or something else because the one really feels limiting as you are just placing a power counter on a minion who has one, which is really funny given the other half. I would love an explanation on this part. Place a power counter on a minion that doesn't have one. You can target rival minions, assuming that you want to steal them with ancient Chinese art to trigger the ongoing. But internally, this makes no sense. Five of your minions don't want counters. Three of them just get their ability wiped out if they do, while the counters actively block Lady Whirlwind. And because of that reason, Trickets are usually transferring counters to themselves, so that eliminates another four. I kept misreading this ability because I can't understand why they have it. You are Kung Fu, you place power counters on minions. This seems completely external and tacked on, which is why I kept getting it wrong, but that's what the card says. I think you can scrap it completely, and the Titan would be fine. The very nature of Sifu is that it leans into synergies that are already existing. Kung Fu is typically played with power counters, or obvious factions who want them like pirates, and Sifu just makes those stronger while having an ongoing that is fairly obtuse to everyone else. So it raises a difficult question. How much does a mostly insular titan do? But there are a few combos that excite me, even though Sifu doesn't do much. Sometimes you need a bit more to make some big plays a little bigger. If you are looking for a quality combo that has a bit of mojo, try Sifu with Star Roamers. 
This little boost helps with an overlooked play because fast as lightning is a return play. Now because of its timing, you need a ship's engineer on another base, but that is easily done. Start with a drunken warrior on a base with ancient Chinese art. That's 5 power, not a lot of power creep at all. Next turn, play ship's captain to grab another drunken warrior. You've added 9 so far for a total of 14. Use ancient Chinese art to pull the two counters off of drunken 1 onto ship's captain, who is now an 8 with the new counter. That frees up the first drunken master to trigger again. Sifu can move the counter from drunken 2 to ship's captain, who is now a 10. Fast as lightning makes him a 12, and that creates a deferred return that can combo with the engineer on another base. You go from 5 to 19 power, but 12 of it is on 1 minion. Add in anything you can get with Dragon Warrior, and it becomes at least 2 more. You can even get 2 more with Expert Timing with Drunken Master or Sifu if you can't already do better than that. Because Fast as Lightning saves Ship's Captain, you can move that 12 or more power to the Engineer's base for a double score. Then, if you notice, Port Me Up does not have the same timing, it's not based on the discard, the return is actually immediate. So it can work on the same base, and you can triple score potentially. If you do get Dragon Warrior, this becomes fairly easy, and actually have me do Ship's Captain for Dragon Warrior, only to return Ship's Captain for a play later. Should you stop the chain, you still have most of your power permanently, and should be able to move Ship's Captain to an empty base if you doubled. My second combo was already strong if you hit their ceiling, and that's Polynesian Voyagers. Voyagers are a very good expert timing play, as it gives them another means to move off the base after Sun Tattoo. But what I really like about this is Sifu can grab any number of counters to himself, but not block Wayfinder. In this context, Sifu does become a good expert timing target, sending all the counters to Wayfinder for a big double score after Sun Tattoo. But my preference is still to use expert timing as another means to save, and this is actually a really good come at me play. Because you can save the high powered Wayfinder anyway, your opponent has to try and rush you off and beat you before it gets to be too large, or before they draw Sun Tattoo. If you do, you set up a solo score on your next turn. You can win a base on someone else's turn, which is phenomenal, and there is double score potential. Admittedly, the locality of ancient Chinese art hurts them when you are trying to add more bases, but if you can consolidate a Wayfinder and an Ocean Tattoo minion, it's really great. For comparable combos, you need to look at who makes, wants, or needs singularly powerful minions, because Sifu helps with that just a bit more. There's a design paradigm I don't get to talk about often because Smash Up really doesn't do it much and I call it Death by a Thousand Cuts, where no single ability hurts you, but the sum of them kills you. Death by a Thousand Cuts is extremely difficult to get right. Trust me, I've been through it at least five times and it's always a challenge. But Sifu gives Kung Fu a real chance at trying it. Sifu may not create a lot of counters at once, but the ongoing is unbounded, so if you could tap into multiple discrete triggers despite their rarity, you can do some cool things in building singularly powerful minions. I think that's ultimately why I think that I think that I like this Titan, because it tries to solve the Kung Fu problems in a novel way, unprecedented for Smash Up, even though there are some rough edges with the current ability. At least, it didn't go overboard. Somewhere in the multiverse, there's a full-length video as to why it makes no sense that Kung Fu got a Titan but Samurai didn't, but that's a topic for another day. What do you think of Sifu? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's shut it down.